Hey there everybody, it's that slasher Elijah and I hope you all are doing well. Today I am going to be giving you all my thoughts and opinions on the latest and greatest chapter in Dead by Daylight uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, I am going to be giving my opinions on the Lich, the new survivors, plural, um, along with the, uh, the map as well. So first off, I'm going to start off with the Lich. Um, first of all, I want to say very, very unique killer, um, even though there were leaks that, you know, kind of spoiled it a couple months back, it is very unique, and it was very refreshing to play as the Lich. Um, let me go ahead and explain to you the Lich's power. The Lich has a power known as Vile Darkness, where basically, uh, the best way that I can put it is you open up a spell book. And using like a radial wheel, you choose from one of four spells to cast, each with their individual cooldowns um, and individual properties. And honestly, for Vecna, who's supposed to be this dark mage character who's experienced in spellcraft, um, it's perfect. It is literally the perfect power for him. I'm now going to go through uh, all of these spells individually. Starting off with Flight of the Damned, you basically summon a line of skeletons that go forward a little bit. They're very, very similar to the artist's crows in the sense that they can deal a health state. Um, just the fact that these ones can deal a health state through walls and you can't put multiple of them down, which kind of differentiates it, which I appreciate. Um, next up, we have Mage Hand, which is, I mean, it's a big-ass hand that you can summon on pallets, uh, where basically what you'll be able to do is either prevent the survivor from throwing down the pallet, or if the survivor, uh, does end up throwing down the pallet, you can then pick up the pallet instantaneously, um, which leads to some pretty cool plays, where maybe the survivor might drop it down, and you pick it up immediately and just walk right on through and get a hit. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. It's very unique. Um, we literally haven't seen anything like it before, and it's something that I definitely appreciate. Uh, summoning Sphere, which is your surveillance uh, part of the power, where basically you summon a giant sphere uh, that if survivors go through it, um, or, or uh, I guess the sphere phases through the survivors, um, you will be able to track them via Killer Instinct, and I believe it also negates a couple of things. Um, I believe it negates the counterplay to him, which is like magical items. Uh, but don't quote me on that. I need to actually read through the power. I'll be honest with you. I, I haven't even read the power. I'm, I'm basically um, just describing it word for word from my own experience. And then you have Fly, which is just Wesker Dash, but you can control it. Well, no, not even Wesker Dash. I would probably describe it more as um, Oni's Demon Dash. Uh, just you actually elevate above the ground and go a hell of a lot faster, which is pretty dope. Um, so now that I've explained every part of his kit, let me give you some initial thoughts. Despite how much Vecna does have going on in his kit, I believe that... While all of these parts are good, there are certain aspects of his power that feel kind of eh to use. Um, specifically, I want to talk about, I guess, Summoning Sphere, Mage Hand, and, um, what's it? Flight of the Damned, which, while all terrific aspects of his power, I find them... I find certain aspects of these to be kind of um, iffy, in a sense. Uh, I'll start off with Mage Hand, which is probably my biggest complaint out of the bunch. Um, so Mage Hand, as I explained earlier, picks up pallets whenever they're dropped and also prevents pallets from being dropped. However, um, and this applies to every single spell, but I find them to be the most punishing with Mage Hand, along with the other aforementioned spells from earlier. Um, whenever you use any spell as Vecna, you suffer minor slowdown, which doesn't seem the, like, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be too terribly punishing, 
but whenever you're like actually executing everything and you have this idea for like a really cool play in mind um, and you can't pull it off because of that slowdown it tends to be a whole lot more punishing um, I find myself only getting value out of mage hand whenever I'm predicting that the survivor is going to throw it down. Basically, I'm initiating Mage Hand as soon as they are throwing it down. Literally immediately. Um, so by the time it is down, it gets picked up immediately. And my slowdown doesn't allow me to lose as much distance as I would have if the you know pallet was already fully dropped. Um, which I think is kind of eh. I, I feel like to fine tune it uh you definitely remove that slowdown hell i'm all for keeping slowdown on certain things like i feel like fly definitely needs its slowdown and i think that it isn't affected as much by its slowdown but i do ne definitely think that that slowdown is necessary for fly just so you can't land immediately on top of survivors and hit them um i believe the exact same thing for flight of the damned just because you know, if, if you weren't getting that slowdown in general, uh, you could just basically insta-down survivors, which isn't good. Um, but for things like, you know, Mage Hand, where the entire point is to negate that, if you have that slowdown as a part of it, it's kind of, eh. If you're actually paying attention to the uh, background footage playing on screen, there's actually a really good example that just... Uh, came up where I tried to use Mage Hand to prevent the pallet from being dropped and I felt as though that maybe I mistimed it actually I probably more than likely did but I felt as though like with that slowdown plus the amount of time that Mage Hand actually stays in effect I feel like it's not really useful to use it on pallets that are already up um but I felt like if I didn't have that slowdown, I probably would have gotten that hit. Um, which obviously, you know, I'm not I'm not entitled to every hit. You know what I mean? Uh, but I'm just I'm just saying. All right. Um, often, whenever I'm playing the Lich and using the Lich's base power, I find myself wanting to do cool things within his kit, uh, such as utilizing the Mage Hand to introduce some level of anti loop, as I just uh, described. However. You know, that slowdown as a result of me using my spells is devastating. Um, and like I said, it's not just Mage Hand. Um, I do find it kind of devastating whenever I'm, I'm, you know, trying to use it with, like, something like as simple as, like, Summoning Sphere. You know what I mean? Um, which, it is what it is. Uh, speaking of Summoning Sphere, there are underwhelming parts of his kit that I do find to be helpful from time to time. Uh, there was a specific game. In fact, it was this game. And it'll probably play later on, but uh, on the Garden of Joy, where I was basically able to ignore the entirety of main building for the majority of the game, uh, just by using Summoning Sphere. Like, that was, that was my surveillance of that entire building, is I would just either A, use Summoning Sphere um, directly on the gen, in main building or I could just put it in a large majority of main building that would cover like the most ground in there all right next up uh, I'd like to talk about my main issue with Vecna's power um, my main issue being that I felt as though I had to make split-second decision-making and had to be on top of my timing 100% of the time uh, in order to get the most out of my power um, which isn't necessarily an issue because I feel like a large majority of Dead by Daylight's killers are autopilot the majority of the time. So the fact that we have another character that actually um, you need to have that split second decision making is fine, well, and good. But I felt as though that was the only time I would ever get like use out of my power. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be rewarded for trying but I also shouldn't have to, like, completely sweat to be able to get value. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that I am, but if you do sweat as Vecna, you're more than likely going to do pretty damn well. Um, I would find myself trying to make use out of Mage Hand, and the way I'd be able to do it is I'd have to correctly predict that, yes, this survivor that I am chasing is in fact going to throw down the pallet in front of me 
essentially I'd be using Mage Hand as they're throwing it down. Even with my slowdown, I can still catch up to them relatively quickly, so there's that. Um, with Flight of the Damned, I find it very rare to actually get, like, hits with it. Um, but the times that I do feel like I did get hits, or the times that I did get hits, I felt as though those hits were kind of undeserved. Um, there's going to be a notable example that shows later on where I'm chasing a Hattie near a short loop around, um, let me think. I, it was Macmillan Estate. Was it Cole Tower? I'm not sure. Um, but basically, it was around a short loop, and I would put down my Flight of the Damned. And basically, the Hattie was faced with two options. Either A, she could crouch and be significantly slowed down, potentially throw down the pallet and maybe extend for another loop, but that's literally a 50-50, right? Um, or what did occur, which is she kept running the loop, and as she kept running the loop, my skeletons actually spawned on top of her, and she was immediately damaged and downed. Um, I felt as though, as a killer, that was definitely an undeserved hit because it literally gave her no time to react and i guess one could argue that that was more so about skeleton placement as opposed to um the actual power itself but nonetheless um i know it may seem like i am bitching and moaning a whole lot about this killer uh i want it to be known that i do genuinely like vecna and his addition to dead by daylight i think he is one of the more unique killers in the game and i do genuinely like his kit um, I feel like his kit, his cooldowns in his kit are actually in a really good space. Like, I don't feel like there was any time during my matches where I wasn't utilizing the entirety of it. Um, and that's something that I really appreciated was that, like, one part of his kit wasn't crazy overpowered or anything like that. Like, I, I really did enjoy that variety. Um, but I did especially feel like the cooldowns were in a terrific space because I felt like... You know, my, my other spells were on cooldown. Okay, I'll use this one. You know, it, it, it encouraged variety, and I appreciate that. Um, in my second ever game as Vecna, um, I definitely started to get those split-second timings down, uh, which honestly showed me that a skilled Vecna could potentially be incredibly dangerous. Uh, I'm going to make a comparison that I've seen a lot of other people draw, um, and I'm going to kind of make that comparison in two, two different parts of Vecna. Uh, that being the Singularity. I do believe that Vecna and the Singularity are very similar in the sense that it's going to take a lot to do really, really fucking well with this killer. But if you do, like, understand it and, like, what all to do in certain situations and at certain loops and what spells to use, I think he's going to be devastating. Like, I think... Honestly, I'm not even sure that, like, an, uh, a buff is warranted. You know, I feel like... I don't know. Because, like, general player base, yes, buff would be fine, well, and good. You know what I mean? Uh, it would definitely make the character a whole hell of a lot more approachable. And I think a large majority of the player base would want that. But I'm not sure. I'm genuinely not sure. If you all, if you all have any anything to to add onto that, please let me know down in the comments below. Overall, I think the worst parts of his kit is definitely the slowdown. Um, there are a couple things here and there that I'd also change, like maybe I'd I'd keep um, Mage Hand out for just a little bit longer. I'd say like a second, maybe two. Um, summoning Sphere. I'd make a little faster just because, like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like the main use of Summoning Sphere is literally to survey gens, and I feel like, I don't know, there's not a whole lot of use for, like, surveying, like, certain loops. You know what I mean? Um, so, if, I don't know. I feel like making it a little bit faster would definitely put it in a really, really good spot. Um, his perks are pretty meh. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it such a stack with you. His perks are pretty terrible. Not even terrible. Um, I'd feel like each of them are perks that you would have in an already existing build. So, like for example, uh, dark arrogance. 
it increases the duration at which you are blinded by any means and uh, also the duration of pallet stuns by 25%, right? But it also increases regular volt speeds by 16%. So you can easily pair that up with like bamboozle superior anatomy and make like a really fucking fast volt speed build, right? Um, same thing goes for Louise Attunement, where after a item becomes depleted for the first time, it's dropped. You could easily pair that up with Hoarder, because whenever that item is dropped, A, a they're going to know that this perk is in play, so they're going to want to pick it up as soon as possible. Um, whenever the survivor picks up that item, they're going to suffer from the Oblivious status effect. You pair that up with Hoarder, they're also going to scream. Or excuse me, they're gonna they're gonna reveal their location, right? Basically, meaning, oh, you know exactly where they are now just because of items, and they have no clue where you are. You know, it, 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 the perks have potential, but the only potential that you're gonna get out of those perks is if you pair them up with other perks. I would much rather him at least have one that stands on its own, um, which is where I get to languid touch, which. It kind of does, but not very much, in my opinion. Um, whenever a survivor within a 32 meters of you scares a crow, they gain exhausted status effect for 6 seconds. It's okay. Um, you'd have to pair that up with, like, Spies from the Shadows or something to be able to get, like, the most value out of it. You know what I mean? I think Weave Attunement and Dark Arrogance on their own is definitely infinitely better than those perks, but it's the fact that you have to basically pair those perks up with other perks. I think, uh, Weave Attunement is definitely gonna be the, the uh, best in the bunch for you, though. Now we're going to be moving on to our latest and greatest in the Survivor, uh, I guess, roster. Uh, it is going to be Aestri's Yazar and fellow bard uh, Bearmar. I'm going to hope to God I pronounce those right. Anyways, these are our new Survivors, and uh, yes, they are Survivors. They're very similar to the Legion in the sense that there are multiple, multiple of them. Um, included in a single character. There has also been uh, rumors in terms of like leaks saying that there could possibly be more of them, right? Um, Design-wise, love it. Uh, I believe a Aestri. I'm gonna call her Aestri. Um, I believe Aestri is an elf because they have they have pointed ears, and I really like that because technically elves aren't human. And I think that Dungeons and Dragons was the um, perfect opportunity to introduce the first non-human survivor. So I thought that was pretty dope. Um, I also love the fact that you know they did include multiple of them in their design, and their designs are very like. Contra not necessarily contradicting, but they're very different, and I like I, I love that. I love that. That's why I like the Legion so much uh, because they offer variety. Variety is key. Variety is loved. Um, their perks pretty fucking cool. Uh, I don't really have anything to say in terms of their perks. Um, I'll start off with Bardic Inspiration. Essentially, what you do. You're gonna roll a d20 in your actual loadout light. Uh, there are multiple instances whenever you're going up against Vecna that a little d20 animation appears on screen. This will not happen. This will actually be included in your uh, collection of four perks down in the bottom right. But whenever you roll a d20, a multitude of things happen. Uh, one of which includes you pulling out a loot, which has brought about some pretty pretty funny uh, moments within the game. Um, but you roll a d20, and depending on what number you get, will affect skill checks and their progress that you get. So, if you get one, you scream and nothing happens. If you get a number two, like between two and ten, skill checks are then given a plus one percent progress. If you get a number between 11 and 19, skill checks now give a two percent progress. And if you get a 20 on the dot, you get plus three percent. Um, the cooldown is for 75 seconds, and I believe, yes, the, uh, the cooldown does go into effect whenever the ability is cancelled and or the performance completes. So, there's that. Uh, next up, we got Mirrored Illusion, which is really, god, it's, like, that's the thing I really, really fucking love about, um, at least the Survivor's perks, is that 
they introduce a bunch of like really new and really unique things. I really fucking appreciate that, right? Um, so this perk is going to activate after completing a total of 50% worth of repairs on a generator. Um, whenever you press the active ability button, when next to a generator, totem and or chest or exit gate, you basically spawn a mimic of yourself that will last for 100 seconds. Um, now, up close, it's nothing. Uh, you can definitely tell that it is a mimic up close, but like, in terms of, you know, just generally distracting the killer, I think it's a very fun perk. Like, what you can do, here's just an example off the top of my head, uh, you can definitely, like, pull down the exit so that, like, one of the lights turn on out of the three, right? pop down an illusion of yourself there see the killer walk up to your illusion while you hide they're automatically gonna assume oh they're trying to distract me go to the other exit gate and then you get out you know um but at the same time i mean you can very well just do the exact same thing with just waiting out the killer and watching them go away but nonetheless Next up is going to be Still Sight. Uh, after standing still for 6 seconds, this perk activates. Until you start moving, you see the aura of the killer, as well as all generators and chests within 18 meters. This this has a lot of potential, actually. Um, whenever I first read this, I thought it was only generators and chests, but now that I see that it shows you the aura of the killer as well, that gives me a whole lot more hope for this perk. Um, because essentially what that's going to allow you to do is, let's use Shaq as an example. Killers doubling back a whole bunch. They're very erratic with their movements. They're not very predictable. Just corner check them, stand still, six seconds, and all of a sudden, all of that prediction uh, goes out the window. Now you just see them. So I actually really like this perk. Um, in terms of being able to see chests and generators, I think for a individual who's been playing the game longer than a day, uh, that's going to be pretty useless just because finding chests, finding generators, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, and yeah, so last but not least, we're going to be talking about the Forgotten Ruins set in the Decimated Borgo or the Knight's Map. And my god, um, I... There, there's a lot going on in this map. First off, I just want to say visually fucking beautiful. There's no other way to describe it. It is beautiful. Um, I love their decision to actually include a dungeon in the Dungeons and Dragons uh, chapter. I really, really fucking appreciated that. And it definitely uh, just made me appreciate the chapter more, right? Um, now, I want to tell y'all something. I have only played D&D once, and I have still not learned the game fully. I, I fully intend to. I am getting a campaign together with a couple buddies. Uh, but I am not experienced in Dungeons & Dragons. I am not chock full of references on the game, and I'm, I'm unaware on a lot of things. But from what I have heard, this map is visually the D&D player's dream. Apparently, there's a lot of references. I am aware of the Beholder. In fact, in the, the footage that you're watching, you can see the cage that the uh, Beholder is being held in. Um, I am aware that in Vecna's power, there are, like, trap chests, and I definitely recognize that, like, the chests with the teeth and the mouth, and I think that's really cool. Um, visually stunning. Visually beautiful, right? However, <laughs> the size, the size is interesting, um, but at the same time, I'm going to give it the benefit of a doubt, and the only reason I'm going to give it the benefit of a doubt is because this map has something very, very unique attributed to it, that being doorways. Um, for those unaware who haven't played on the PTB, this map has several doorways that you can go through that will teleport you to different parts of the map. And I, I want to say that the teleports are static, but don't quote me on that. Um, I, I need to, I guess I play on the map more. I've only played on it once, you know, 
unfortunately. Uh, but I want to see if those teleports are static. If they are, that would definitely make it a whole hell of a lot more manageable. Don't get me wrong, I'm a little bit upset. Um, if they are static, that would make me a little upset just because that would mean, oh, I now have to memorize all of the different teleports and like what doorway goes to what. You know what I mean? Like that would, that would be a little upsetting, right? But at the same time, if they are, it would make the size manageable for Killer. For Survivor, it's a great map, right? Um, there is a huge bottom area. There is a huge top area above ground. Uh, gens are spread out. It's going to be pretty easy for Survivors to, to get a couple outs every now and again. You know what I mean? Um, however, if those doorways are static and you know, are attributed to one another, then, uh, maybe it can be a little bit more manageable for killer, you know? Um, all in all, I'm not gonna say it is balanced. I am gonna say it is unbalanced for the time being. Uh, however, that may, may change. Maybe I'll do, like, an update on this. Uh, nonetheless, all in all, Dungeons and & Dragons and Dead by Daylight is, I believe, a very well-done chapter, but I also believe that there are portions of it that are both over and underpowered, if that makes any sense. Um, I believe Vecnet would need for him to be approachable to any player, right? Just your average Joe of a player. I do think that he, he would need a buff, and I, I'm not afraid to say that. Um, I believe that the Survivor is perfect. I think they have a lot of really, really cool perks going for them. Um... My, my only eh, one I'd have to say is probably Still Sight, just because, I don't know, I feel like there are other perks that do all of the things that Still Sight does a little better, and I feel like we've had so many of these perks to the fact that it feels like, oh, okay, this is just another information perk, but it's like slightly worse, you know what I mean? Uh, nonetheless, overall... Very, very well done chapter, uh, but we are still in the PTB, so I, I do think that this will get a little bit of fine-tuning, and in the coming weeks, I would love to see the result of that fine-tuning. So, uh, thank you all, once again, for so much for watching. I apologize for uh, not uploading as often as I have been, as I, uh, I put at the beginning of the video. Um, I am sick. Uh, well, I, I was sick. I'm, I'm recovering currently, uh, but... You know, I did have a sinus infection, and I sounded significantly worse than how I do now. Uh, I still don't sound the greatest, though, but it is what it is. Um, but thank you all for sticking with me. Nonetheless, there's been a lot going on, and it just, I don't know. This community is really starting to grow, and you all's continued support just means the world to me. So thank you all. Once again, just so much for all of that. Uh, it really does mean the world to me. Please know uh, that I do have a Discord, so if you would like to talk to me directly, please feel free to join. There will be a link down in the description below. As always, thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, like, whatever you would like to do. Comment down below. Tell me your thoughts on my thoughts. Once again, be like the unknown. Do not deny yourself your happiness. Life is what you make it. And have a terrific day.